What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Cornelia, back for another episode of Black News, a podcast where we break down current events, hot topics, and local stories involving Black people. Now let's get into it. First things first, y'all, Atlanta. I will definitely be in town at the Laughing Skull Comedy Festival shows the entire weekend of September 30th. So that Friday night, the 30th, October 1st, Saturday night, October 2nd, Sunday night. I have shows all three nights. I will not be doing long sets. I will be doing short sets because it is a festival and the point is to showcase all all of the talent that will be in town for that weekend. So if you are in Atlanta, I will be there doing shows and performing. Come out, see your girl. I will have more details on social media this coming week and next week. So be on the lookout for that. Besides that, if you're in LA, I will have shows in town up until that point and afterwards. So check canelia.com for more information and for show dates and ticket information. With that said, though, guys, got a lot to talk about this week. So let's go ahead and get into it. Y'all, the black women were in the building for the Emmy Awards this year. This week, the Emmy Awards, y'all, black women in the building. Okay, they were in the building every year. We talk about award shows and we get disappointed and we set ourselves up for failure. I be doing that too. I be so excited and don't nobody black win and I be rooting for everybody black. So when they don't win and they ain't black, I be pissed. You get what I'm saying? But this year, y'all, the Emmy Awards, the black women were black women. Okay, did y'all watch first, second? Emmy Awards came, NBC, hosted by Kenan Thompson. Shout out to Kenan, man. Shout out to Kenan Thompson for consistently working for like the last 30 years. Kenan was on all that, went to Saturday Night Live and has been the longest Saturday Night Live actor, whatever, sketch, comic. He's been the longest running performer on that show to date. So he did a good job last night. Kudos to Kenan. But the reason we're here, we are gathered here to celebrate black women, black womening. So a couple things we were looking forward to. Abbott Elementary was nominated for a bunch of stuff. We knew that. Damn near the whole cast was nominated. But we are in support of that show and Quinta Brunson. And they came through so Quinta Brunson won the writing award for Abbott Abbott Elementary and in the category that she won she was actually only the third black person to win that award it now it's her Larry Wilmore for Bernie Mac and Lena Waithe for Master Master of None those are the only three people that have won best writing in a comedy in that category this entire time. So while we are happy, let's add a note to say the whole first, second, and third black person thing is 2022, y'all. We've got to overcome. Okay, we've got to. With that said, Lizzo won for best competition series. She has a show. I didn't even know. Y'all, I had no clue that Lizzo had a show. Okay, I had no, I did not know. I didn't know Lizzo had a show out. I just knew she had music and like a line of athleisure. I ain't know she had a show. It's called Watch Out for the Big Girls. Love the title. The club song Watch Out for the Big Girls, one of my favorites. But she won for Best Competition Series. She actually beat RuPaul, who has won for RuPaul's Drag Race, I believe, four years in a row. So that's huge because ain't nobody knocking Ru off, off the throne, okay? Rue gonna be Rue be ruined and Rue is going to win that award, but not this year. Lizzo was there, had a very passionate acceptance speech, had a beautiful red poofy dress on, and just was it was just a great highlight for the evening. Zendaya won for the second time best drama performance for an actress for her role in Euphoria. 
This is the first and only time a black woman has won twice in that category. And if I'm not mistaken, she is the only black woman to win the best drama award period behind Viola Davis. Correct me if I'm wrong. It may just be the two of them. And if it ain't two, it's only three. Let's not be, let's not be like, well, it was more. If it was more, it's only one more. Cause y'all, while we excited that the Emmy's going to Emmy. Okay. So we, Zen, I don't watch Euphoria because it does too much for my anxiety. Okay. The back and forth and the drug use and it's just way too much. So I physically and emotionally cannot handle watching it, but I know it's a damn good show and shout out to Nick King, fellow comedian who plays her uh, character's mom on Euphoria. Shout out to all of them and kudos to Zendaya because she be killing it. I love Zendaya, by the way, but, but it, continuing on Gerard Carmichael, who's not a black woman, but we going to loop him in because we talking about black people. Okay. He won for his stand up comedy special, Raw Daniel. He showed up to the awards, except, except his speech with a full white mink on y'all, no shirt slacks and had his draw showing at the top. Y'all shout out to Gerard Carmichael. If you haven't watched Raw Daniel, it was on HBO, very intimate special. I would say it was heavy. It was heavier on the intimate uh, aspect and the seriousness versus comedy and jokes, which is completely fine because now we're seeing specials don't have to be just ha 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 the whole way through. It can be whatever you want it to be. And that this proves it because he won for Raw Thaniel, a primetime Emmy award. And finally, Miss Cheryl Lee Ralph. The original dream girl. Y'all have heard me say that many of times on black news, the original dream girl. And when I say that I'm referencing the fact that the Broadway show dream girls, the first iteration that, that came out back in the 1970s or eighties, I believe Cheryl Lee Ralph was the first Dina. She was a part of the first cast for the Broadway production of Dream Girls. Her along with Loretta Devine and Jennifer Holliday. Legendary casting, legendary performances, looks, talent. Cheryl Lee Ralph always been a triple threat, honey. She's always been that. And she's a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, so she technically my solo. Shout out to her, Oop. Cheryl Lee Ralph won best supporting actress in a comedy and had one of the best, most emotional acceptance speeches in award show history. First, she was shocked. They called her name. She probably couldn't believe it because she's been at this for so long. And to finally get here at this moment, it's a lot to take in. Walked up to the stage, started off with a song, then continue on with a passionate speech about striving for your goals and never giving up and thanking everybody who believed in her, supported her, loving her. She thanked her husband, her kids, and and just people who, like I said, who have had her back in general. She also shouted out Quinta Brunson because she she's in this situation because of that show. And there was a tweet floating around and I don't know if Quinta actually said this in an interview, maybe so, but they were saying Quinta said she was, her goal was to get Cheryl Lee Ralph and Emmy. And she actually has done that. So y'all, when I tell you when they announced Cheryl Lee Ralph name, I screamed, I screamed. I y'all, I screamed that loud since remember when Viola Davis and Taraji P. Henson were nominated in the same category and they were in Viola one at the, I believe it was the Oscars. Y'all I screamed then when Halle Berry won back in the day for Monsters Ball screamed then. I'd be like when, and part of it was because I was shocked every year we go through this. We know great performances and we are disappointed. And so we, we don't set ourselves for the, up, up for the okie doke, but y'all, I was so happy. I am so happy for Cheryl Lee Ralph. I'm happy for all of them, but I am so happy for Cheryl Lee Ralph. She is the only the second black women, woman to win the best supporting actress in a comedy award at the Emmys. The first and only for 30 some years 
was Jack A. Harry for her role in 227. Y'all, 227 came out when I was like four, maybe. Some black news listeners, y'all probably listening. Y'all don't know what the hell 227 is. Regina King's one of her first roles. I don't even know if you can find 227 on any of the streamers, but if you can watch it, it has been since Jack A. Harry was on 227 till now that a black woman has won the best supporting actress in a comedy award at the Emmys. Talk about ridiculous. But either way, we happy. I'm happy for Shirley Ralph. And also kudos to Quinta Brunson. Y'all, I've been saying this and I've said this before. It's hard as I'm a, y'all, it's hard as fuck to get stuff made out here. It is so hard. She even mentioned that. She said, I want to thank ABC, Disney, um, Fox. I think she, and Warner Brothers. She thanked four different production houses. That it's, y'all, it's so hard to get stuff made here and put on TV. Y'all have no idea. So for her to go from internet, social media, viral videos all the way to this y'all full circle i just love it i love it did you guys watch and were you as excited about these wins as i was hit me up and let me know your thoughts um hit me up at canelia on social media speaking of tv and movies disney's the little mermaid trailer was released this past week starring halle bailey We all knew that we were preparing for her to take on the role of Ariel in this movie. This iconic Disney movie. She will officially be a Disney princess per se. Because I don't, I don't even remember. What did Ariel turn into a princess? I know she rose up out the water and married that white man. She was with that white man. But I don't know if he was a king. prince. I don't know. The point is, I was crying. I feel like every black person I don't care if you were a man woman or child felt some level of emotion by that little mermaid trailer and it's not just because we are happy that Ariel is is being portrayed as a black woman there were so many different elements to this one we've always known this as adults what representation means what it means to see yourself in characters on television whether they're fictional or real people we know that we also know what it feels like to grow up in a time where what no black disney princesses you ain't gonna see nobody black on disney you might hear a black voice because sebastian the fish was jamaican okay he was west. that brother was west indian he only a fish that's all we had so we know what it's like to not see we also know what it's like now as adults to watch these experiences through children's eyes with movies like black panther and um princess tiana from the other uh, princess and the frog that disney movie so to see little kids experiencing that is really wonderful but when i tell y'all y'all me seeing hallie swim around with them fins on with her locks dyed red and her sing y'all know hallie already got them pipes Hallie is one of the best singers out right now of this current generation, the the younger generation, Gen uh, Z. To see all of this combined with the full orchestra playing the music in the background of her song. And it was just a small clip, a snippet. Y'all, I lost it. I was so emotional. Oh my, it, y'all, I, every time I watch it, they've been doing challenges on TikTok to show real reactions of children, black and brown children seeing the trailer. Every time I see it, I break down in tears. I just can't handle it. Y'all, I am so excited for Hallie and I'm so excited for kids to watch this movie. Hell, y'all, the adults gonna be in this movie. I'm gonna be in that theater, okay? The little kid, scooch over and you bet not be in there uh talking loud when hallie i'm i'm gonna be yelling in that movie she starts singing i'm gonna be the old it figure type woman with a natural in the back yelling same i cannot wait i'm talking about emotional but let me point out the people at home the non-blacks they mad 
I figured, and I we knew that they was pissed. Every time a character is turned black, every time a fake person, someone that doesn't even exist is turned black, people be really angry. And I've been trying to figure out if it's just because they feel like they have ownership over these characters or is it because they really just don't want to see black people or they think this is a part of the takeover because low key some of them think it's the takeover and it is. But people started putting together Facebook groups and sending hate messages. It had like hundreds of thousands of dislikes the the trailer on YouTube. The hell? What? This is a kids movie. You going to dislike the children's movie? People at the house mad and they gonna be pissed when they see Hallie swimming through that water with them pipes because sis can't can say one thing you can't do is deny talent and it's one thing for somebody who like angry and a bigot to be at home knowing somebody got them pipes and, and killing the performance and they still be mad because that just contributes to it I can't wait I can't wait People be so mad when fictional characters are changed. And I say fictional because people were trying to be like, well, what if Black Panther was cast as a white man? That's different. While Wakanda is not a real place, the continent of Africa is. He is a black man. He ain't a black creature. T'Challa was not this black, like mutant from outer space. He was a black man wearing a panther suit. It's a costume. In this case, mm, mermaids aren't real. We don't know where they from. If they were real and they were living in, I'm assuming tropical waters, because I mentioned this earlier, Sebastian was West Indian. That man had, that little fish had a Jamaican accent. So they in the Caribbean, hmm, who lives over there? Blacks. Of course, Ariel then gonna be black. She's swimming around Jamaica. And at the very least, she's Latina. So y'all cut this out. I was, that reminds me. I was somewhere doing stand-up comedy, working on some new jokes. And this little white boy was working on a bit about the new Game of Thrones spinoff, House of the Dragon, or as black people call it, House of Dragon, because we ain't adding that the. And he was doing a joke about how he can't watch House of, House of the Dragon because it's too inclusive. Y'all, House of the Dragon is fake. It's a, it was based on a book of a fictional world. It's not real. Adding... They be doing magic. They have dragons on. There was a red woman who was like 6 million years old. She was on. And when she took off her necklace, she got old again. This world was created with fantasy and allure. And this, this little boy said he couldn't watch it because it's too inclusive. So of course I had to bring up the fact that Game of Thrones world has been on television for over 10 years. The first iteration, about eight seasons. We have been watching this for a long time. In the totality of both series, there have only been maybe at the most, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, four black people. On the first iteration, one was a slave. She was, she just got out of slavery. The other one, he didn't even have no penis. They cut his, y'all, he didn't even have a wee-wee. On this version, House of the Dragon, there is one family that is a black We've only seen two or three black people. They just got speaking lines. So now all of a sudden you mad because there's a black man on this version with opinions. Now it's too inclusive because a brother got opinions. Get out of here. Black people were here at the start of creation. The first man was a black man. Those artifacts from that, those, that those beings were found in Africa. But somehow non-black people think black that think we just came out in 1619. They think we just popped up out of nowhere in 1619 before we didn't even exist. If Africans existed and had access to the richest and wealthiest continent and natural resources, if the richest man in documented history, Mansa Musa, lived in Africa and explored on his own dime throughout the continent, if boats and ships were trading from African ports 
for centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries prior to what we know about. Why wouldn't we think that it would be some black people rolling around Europe during medieval times? The Moors was up there teaching people how to clean themselves, teaching white people how to clean themselves. So why would we be like, they couldn't have been in Europe in during those times? Why wouldn't we? We were the first men. Of course we were because we were more advanced than everybody else. Guys, make it make sense. I know I went completely left with that, but it just was on my spirit. I just can't. Um, And I can't wait to see the people pissed off when they see Hallie swimming through them waters singing. Singing and dancing with them fins on. I'm so excited. Are y'all going to see the Little Mermaid? I know we grown, but. And I ain't even going to find no kids to take. I'm just going to go by myself. Give me a little dinner. Have me a cocktail at the movie theater and I'm going to go. What y'all think? Are you guys going to go see it? And are you as excited as I am? Hit me up and let me know. Black and brown people were dragging Queen Elizabeth this past week. Now, the queen died. In case you have not turned on the TV, cut on your phone, looked at any news or social media outlet, publication, gossip site, whatever, you probably have, may have missed that Queen Elizabeth II died. She was, I believe, like 96 years old. She was old. Now, people, mainly British and white Americans and other Europeans overall, we're sad offering their condolences. This is a big deal. We have not seen the passing of a queen um, in this country or the funeral procession and the events surrounding this in years since her daddy died. So this is our first time observing all of these things. It's written is really interesting to see because there are a lot of old traditions that we would know about. Uh, so it's watching it. It's kind of like, oh, OK, mm, that's mm, wow. Now, because of Great Britain's role in colonialism, people of color and Irish people was dragging Queen Elizabeth II on social media. I'm talking about straight dragging jokes for days. I saw a clip of of a a soccer game in Ireland where they were basically chanting something to the effect of the queen dead put her in a box or something like that. I'm talking about Irish people pissed. And... That's because of Great Britain's role and the Queen's role in, like I said, colonialism across the globe. Now, people don't be knowing history. They don't be reading books or having common sense. We know that on Black News, the Black News listeners, we know people do not be reading. And, to, you know, to a fall, we know education in, in this country is is tailored towards a certain demographic and that demographic doesn't like doesn't necessarily prefer to tell the truth in a lot of cases and i'm noticing that other countries have that same um narrative listening to people from great britain talk they seem to forget or have not been taught about the monarchy's part in the part that they played in colonialism and brutalization across the world so I ain't going to just say that's an American thing. It's, it seemed like it's worldwide. But at one point, the British Empire ruled or colonized. I'm just going to name off some of the places that was under British rule at one point. A part of the United States. Okay. There were British colonies. We fought an entire revolution to break from their rule. Let's. Let's point that out. So when Americans be like, yeah, it's so sad. Y'all know we fought to get away from them, right? What you, y'all, whatever. Okay. Now, right now, there are only a few territories that are still a part of British rule. But we're going to talk about the ones that used to be. Now, former head of state, Commonwealth. These include Antigua, Barbuda, Bahamas, Australia, Belize, Barbados, Canada, Grenada, Jamaica, New Zealand, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Solomon Islands, India, Hong Kong, the Gold Coast. Gold Coast in Africa consisted of Kenya, Sudan, Botswana, Somalia, Egypt, Eastern Ghana, Gambia, Niger, Benin. This goes on and on and on. 
these are only a few. I'm talking about they were they were over like Auckland Islands, like Honduras. I mentioned Belize, Honduras, Togoland, Fiji. I'm wherever there were people, the British went and terrorized. We've seen people talk about and um and show stories about how British soldiers soldiers were putting people in concentration camps, murdering, mutilating, torturing people, stealing valuables, resources, jewels, gold, diamonds, money. When we be seeing pictures of the queen and the British, the royal family wearing beautiful jewelry and holding staffs with with all of these beautiful uh, diamonds and rubies and, and sapphires on them. Y'all, those were stolen. They did not go in. Those aren't theirs. They went, looted, raided, and bought it back here. And here, I'm not talking about America, to Great Britain. Those were stolen. So people were on social media not sharing kind thoughts about the queen and that family. Some people were speaking out. Jeff Bezos attacked a black woman and was like, said something negative that ended up having, getting her harassed on Twitter. Um, but I'm assuming Jeff didn't, I don't know history uh, because you can, you can, there's been this idea floating around where people were saying, this is not the time to bring up bad things about people. However, maybe you shouldn't do that bad things in life. One thing we need to stop doing is sugarcoating history and hiding truth. And if somebody did some crazy shit while they was here, hey, talk about it. Hey, they, they shouldn't have did it. Okay. They shouldn't have did it. So with that, what did y'all think about the queen's uh, passing? Uh, and and are you, what's, what side are you on? Are you the yes, let's tell the truth? Or are you like, oh, let's wait till a little later and then talk about it. Hit me up. Let me know your thoughts at Cornelia. A part of me is feeling like black news in a way, it's turning into sort of a memorial for members of the stand-up comedy community. I say that because what it's, it seems like every few months, somebody passes away that were a part of our entertainment village and family. And I bring it up on Black News to to show love for people and 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 just to, to remember them and, and to let you guys know about a talent that's no longer here, but we can always go back and watch some of their old content. So I do that to share. And because it's my podcast and I won't talk about it, but I hate that so many people are dying. With that, I have to talk about David A. Arnold. David A. Arnold. Excellent stand-up comic, excellent writer, excellent executive producer, creator, mentor, teacher, friend, husband, father, passed away this past week. David Arnold was one of those people who everybody in entertainment knew and nobody had anything bad to say about David. He taught a stand-up comedy class. And I would say probably I'm willing to bet say about maybe 80% of black comics in LA took that class. And the class for some people wasn't necessarily to learn how to do stand up, but it was early in your career. It was how to learn how to do it. Well, we took that class. When you took that class, David became like your, your mentor. For some people, he was their mentor before the class because he was in all of the comedy clubs hanging out working on his craft. David been doing stand up for about 27 years. He'd been at it for a long time. So we all knew him, but especially those when he saw something in, he made a point to support our talent and to be that person in this business that we can, that we can come to because you don't find that very often. A lot of people out here ain't really willing to share and help you and adding a lot of people, especially men don't respect women comedians. They don't respect us. Some do. I can name quite a few of my peers, my brothers in comedy who I feel like really respect this, but don't get it twisted. Some don't, especially some of the older ones. 
the vets. David respected us. He didn't look at women in comics like, oh, they's my little mentee. Oh, look at these little women. No, if he thought you had a gift and saw you working at it and you were funny and he didn't care if you were a woman, he respected that. And that's one thing about him that I will always appreciate. That man died. And when I tell you, Everybody has been taking it hard. I can only imagine what his family and his super close friends are going through. It's a big loss. He had two daughters in high school. He had a wife. They were featured on Black Love, the show um, that was on own video clips of them talking. He got two fantastic um, specials on Netflix, Fat Ballerina and It Ain't For The Week. Go watch those, both hilarious. Y'all, it's a big loss. Not having David in these clubs and and not having David on your cell phone to just bounce stuff off or him to hit you up and just tag jokes or just to say he was excited for what you was working on. Not having that, y'all, I don't. Y'all, we've been losing a lot of people. When, and this it shows me, and it shows all of us, and I already knew this, but every time, every so now and then you get a reminder, you can have all the plans you want. You can be out here like, yeah, I'm about to do this. I'm going to do this. I can't wait till I get to this point because this going to happen. And then if I keep working, blah, 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 God going to have his plan and you can have yours all you want to, but he going to do what he's going to do. When it's your time, it is your time. You can plan how some, there's a quote, how arrogant are we to think that we have more time? How arrogant David was 54 years old, had probably five more comedy specials. And when I last talked to him, he was like, you know, I got about four more Emmy. I'm getting back on the road and to work on the next one. We take, we hoping to take that in within a year. This, he had plans. So it's just, you know, it's just tragic. Pray for his family, man. Cause I, I can't imagine. Um, and it just, David was just so funny. Like I remember y'all, y'all know I used to do news in Sacramento and I was the only black person up on that news station, especially on that particular morning show. And we, they were trying to do different things, new things with the station. So they would have us doing these funny promos and spoofs. We did a full house spoof. We did a la la land. Uh, like we kind of did like a, did a, like a commercial around that. It was just a good time. And like some just silly stuff. But David, every time he would see me post something to social media, I would post a clip or something. He would message me or say when he was see me or say something, he'd be like, you up there prancing around with them white folks. <laughs> and he would laugh. He would be like, you up there getting that white money. <laughs> he would just laugh. He had this real distinctive laugh. <laughs> it was if you heard his laugh, you would know it. And he every time he would see me doing that new stuff. He would, he just thought it was so funny that I was prancing around as he said it with them white folks. Y'all big loss. Definitely going to be missed. David's going to be missed by everybody in this business. Everybody from the wheel packers all the way down to the open micers that y'all know. Um, so I, I would suggest that you guys continue to support his content Watch Fat Ballerina and watch It Ain't For The Week on Netflix. You're going to die laughing. It's hilarious. You're going to have a good time. But do it in support of his his legacy, his memory, and his family. Um, And, and just keep praying for them. Did y'all know about David before? He was really big on social media with the family videos and content. And just, just an all-around good dude, man. <sighs> yeah. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts about it. Hit me up. To recap this week's episode, we talked about the Black Emmy Award winners this year, Quinta Brunson, Lizzo, Zendaya, Cheryl Lee Ralph, and Gerard Carmichael took home awards this year at the whatever number of Emmy Awards um, that aired on NBC. 
Also, the Little Mermaid trailer was released with Halle Bailey starring as Ariel. Super excited and emotional about that. And I don't, like I said, I don't know about y'all, but I can't wait to, I'm going to be at the theaters. Okay. Next, black and brown people were dragging the queen. She passed away. I won't say untimely death because she was old, but black, brown, and Irish people were definitely not here for it. Um, And so we watched that and we'll continue to watch as the funeral procession and events continue on. And lastly, we honor and will always appreciate the life and the legacy of the legendary David A. Arnold. Hit me up and let me know what you thought about any and all of these topics. And I'll see you guys back here next week. Same time. That's it for this week's episode of Black News, y'all. Thanks again. Thank you. And thank you again so much for sticking with us, supporting the podcast, liking and subscribing on all apps where podcasts can be heard, rating five stars and leaving a comment. It helps more than you know. So I really, really appreciate it. And keep sharing Black News with all of your friends and family. Be sure to hit me up on social media if you got ideas for topics. Or just hit me up in general to let me know you've been listening. Let me know your thoughts. I'm at Canelia on all platforms across the board. That's at Canelia like Kenny and Ophelia. Also check my website. I got some shows coming up in a Los Angeles County. Hopefully get on the road soon. But for now, if you're in the LA area, hit me up. Check Canelia.com for show dates and details. And as always, thanks again so much guys i hope you have a fantastic week keep supporting keep growing keep building keep staying safe and keep staying healthy as always again i'll see you back here next time same time same place bye